we needed to capture images in the shortest time possible. This is where stereoscopic imaging came in. What this meant is our imager needed to quickly and reliably translate the camera board linearly between two positions. Preliminary prototypes were rough, but gave us an idea of the stereoscopic displacement and distance required for successful, rapid stereoscopic image capture. We went through a number of iterations to get a comfortable, reliable device. But our drive for improvement was still not satisfied. After a number of grip tests using a moldable thermoplastic, we arrived at a new design, small enough to fit into a purse and easy enough to use on both yourself and someone else. Our build materials is incredibly inexpensive, with a predicted materials cost of $35 to build. Our device can be used to take stereoscopic pictures of skin abnormalities. We use the same technology used in 3D movies to visualize these abnormalities on a laptop. Now, the technology behind it is really quite simple. We take one picture from the left eye's perspective, then move the camera and take another picture from the right eye's perspective. These pictures can then be aligned such that the correct eye sees the correct image. Now, this allows our brain to perceive depth, but also so much more than that. Because your brain is essentially seeing two pictures, details that would otherwise be hard to see in the skin abnormality pop out quite clearly in 3D. For our image analysis, we look to the standard ABCs of mole monitoring. This is asymmetry, border, color, diameter, and elevation. We first fit a boundary to each of the lesions, and then fit a circular border around each of these boundaries. By looking at the differences between these two fits, we're able to find values to track asymmetry, border, and of course, diameter. We then generated a histogram using each of the pixels within this boundary. This gave us a means to track color over time. One of our most exciting features is that we can track elevation. We do this by using our 3D stereoscopic images and generating 2D height maps. For each trial of our clinical study, the doctor first logged into the web interface. The doctor then entered a patient identification code and location of the abnormality. The decision to biopsy and a preliminary diagnosis were also recorded. The doctor then used the three-germ dermatoscope to image the patient's abnormality. On-screen instructions guided the doctor through the image capturing process. The computer then determined if the images were taken correctly. If the device was shifted during the imaging process, the on-screen commands instructed the user to retake the scan. Images were then uploaded. The doctor could see the obtained images as a new entry in the patient portal. These 2D and 3D images were then given to the doctors on our study panel to see if they could determine if a biopsy was necessary and if a preliminary diagnosis could Our pilot study showed that we had 0% false negatives. This is important because it means that in every instance our panel doctors were shown a cancerous lesion, they all agreed to take a biopsy. We also had a 9.3% increase in false positives, meaning that our panel doctors decided to biopsy a lesion that was eventually determined non-cancerous. We are not worried about these trials because in any case that a doctor found an image to look suspicious, they would first call the patient in for an on-site consultation before taking the biopsy. We also estimate that our system would decrease patient visits by 40%. This means that in 40% of our trials, all of our panel doctors, as well as the on-site doctor, agreed that the lesion was obviously benign. If a patient had submitted this scan, they would have been told that they did not need to come in for an office visit. After logging in, doctors can select a patient from the drop-down menu, view the patient's medical history, and see a list of the patient's abnormalities. Doctors have the option of seeing the abnormality in full screen or even a 2D color coded height map. The toolbox on the right has a location history option for viewing information specific to this abnormality. Doctors can also download 3D images of any scan. If the doctor needs to contact the patient, it is as easy as clicking a button. If the doctor wants to consult with another physician on a specific lesion, the consult tool can be used to send de-identified case information to other registered doctors. Each abnormality scan history can be easily accessed and compared visually. An overview of the larger skin area can also be viewed. Calculated characteristics of these lesions are automatically tracked by our server and can be seen graphically under the analysis tab. Monitored variables for area, radius, border, asymmetry, color consistency, and color brightness can be seen here. These graphs allow for easy detection of significant changes.
This device, I think, will improve greatly on existing technology. Dermatologists who use uh, technology like this use a little handheld device called uh, a derm light, uh, which gives you uh, really just kind of 2D uh, information. The most common thing that we use is called a dermatoscope, and it's simply a, basically a magnifying lens. A digital dermoscopy camera, and then just a regular handheld device. We actually take photographic images and follow them to see if a nevus is changing or if to see if something looks suspicious. And to be able to get that 3D image versus just a 2D, you know, um, just looking through a mic magnifying lens, I think will add a lot because it will give us a lot more characteristics to rely on. Uh, well, I think certainly having a 3D uh, image I think helps in that you can see surface texture. Conceivably, having uh, an extra dimension with which to probe uh, the tissue that we're examining in the clinic would allow us to um, uh, just have more detail and therefore more accurate decision making. Some of them uh, where it's flat, it actually helps to see that it's flat. Something like this that can create a 3D image will greatly allow us to assess better a lesion that we can then follow over time. It does help to see the nature of the scale across a little bit better. The image quality is very good. Um, it, I was actually very impressed with it. it. The image quality is actually quite impressive. I think that the use of polarized light allows you to assay the pigment network uh, in ways that are important to evaluate whether a lesion is benign or malignant. In terms of the height and the shape of the lesion and even all those little details with the scaling and the color, it captures it very, very well. The 3D image uh, gives you a real sense of uh, change in size over time. The quality right now, I, I think, is, is good. It is just as good as what I'm using now, if not better. 2D image quality is certainly better than what we have with the standard derm light, and the 3D, of course, is excellent. It's excellent. I think that the main improvement of the 3D dermatoscope is that it enables us to have our patients actually follow concerning lesions at home and to provide feedback directly to the office. I would use it maybe in place of my dermatoscope. You can use it for follow-up, uh, for long-term follow-up of a skin lesion, for example. I would also um, encourage its use if it were something that the patient could get and have at their home. It's something that we've always wanted to be able to do, to watch lesions develop in real time. And it may enable us to intervene uh, earlier if necessary. Being able to take those images and to see it in a 3D fashion, I would use it to look at my patient's individual lesions and to, and to follow them over time and actually create a database based on the, each individual patient. I would primarily use it for my patients who have uh, atypical uh, nevi, history of melanoma. We already have patients who will take a, uh, an image of a skin lesion uh, and send it to us. Just today I had a patient call me about a suspicious lesion and he doesn't necessarily want to come in so we're having him send us a picture of the spot that he's concerned about. If he had this at home and were able to send us a, a 3D image of it, it would greatly improve our ability to say, come in now or it looks fine and come in in two months. A small unit that a patient can take a, a picture of at home uh, would also work. We give them some peace of mind that we can follow lesions. Really the vast number of patients who come to us in dermatology are here for skin screening for skin cancer and uh, therefore to have a device which would uh, enhance our uh, clinical decision making would enhance patient care. Rather than um, possibly running in for every little thing that somebody is scared of, they could possibly send us an image and then we can assess better and be able to triage better whether give me a little bit more certainty that we're providing the best level of care possible. Teledermatology is kind of the wave of the future. The impact would be great. Specifically with respect to areas of the country where there's less access to high quality dermatology. Okay. Give us another instrument that may even replace what we have now. I would consider using the technology. I would certainly use this technology. I would absolutely use this device.